What's going on, Dub Nation? You're watching Warriors Today by Chat Sports, and on today's show, we're diving into some news coming out of Golden State as they're hosting a new workout. Troy Brown Jr. is headed to the Bay Area to do a little pre-training camp workout to see if he can earn himself a camp contract before the 2024-25 NBA season. So, Troy Brown Jr., right? We're talking about a guy here who has played a couple of seasons in the NBA. He was a 15th overall pick back in the day, so cl close to a lottery guy here, but now he finds himself trying to earn himself another year in the NBA, basically, right? He's, he's kind of uh, been doing signing these veteran minimum contracts for the past couple of seasons. And he's played decently on those, but here he is trying to make another training camp roster for the start of the new season. Here's what Kendra Andrews had to say when she announced the workout on Twitter. He said, the Warriors will be working out veteran Troy Brown Jr. this week as a part of a few workouts, according to a source, tells ESPN. Brown spent one season with the Lakers in 22-23 and has time with the Timberwolves last year. Golden State has two partial non-guaranteed contracts available. So if you remember, right, Gui Santos and Lindy Waters II. We talked about those guys being non-guaranteed. Lindy Waters became guaranteed. Now Gui Santos is the only player on Golden State's roster that has non-guaranteed money for the 2024-25 season. So they have to cut him in order to make room for a guy like Troy Brown Jr. or a couple of the other guys that they've worked out to make the roster. So, and here's this tweet real quick. Just a nice little joke from Warriors Muse here on Twitter. Give him a follow if you're a good good Dubs fan, a part of Dub Nation on Twitter. The two seasons go, the Lakers get Troy Brown. Lakers make the Western Conference Finals. Last season, the Wolves got Troy Brown. The Wolves make the Western Conference Finals. This year, could Troy Brown be the X Factor that makes Golden State a Western Conference Finals team? Time will only tell. I don't think so. Let's be honest here. But from what we've heard over the past couple of weeks, Golden State has been working out multiple veterans. Uh, you know, think about Bruno Caboclo, who shined in the Paris Olympics this 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 summer. Think about um, Davis Bertans, who could provide some stretch shooting in, uh, off the bench for Golden State, but really no defense. Troy Brown Jr. is a guy who can provide a little bit on both ends, and we'll talk about Troy Brown Jr. in just a second and how he can potentially fit on this Golden State Warriors roster. But before we do, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. This is why you subscribe to Golden State Warriors today. Whenever there is a piece of Golden State Warriors news, rumors, trade, doesn't matter, work out just like this today. We're in the dog days of September, about a month away from training camp. So subscribe to the channel for daily Warriors content here on YouTube. We're going to be bringing you nonstop content for the 2024-25 season and beyond. So you're not going to want to miss a thing. Subscribe to the channel. So, Troy Brown Jr., like I said, 15th overall pick back in 2018. Kind of crazy that this guy was nearly a lottery pick just six years ago, and now he's fighting for an NBA contract with the Golden State Warriors, trying to just become a camp body. It's crazy. He spent time, my most, in my opinion, his most productive days were with the Washington Wizards, spent time with the Bulls, the Lakers, where he started 45 games in a season a couple years ago, as well as the Timberwolves and Detroit Pistons last year to round his career out. So as far as Troy Brown Jr. being a guy that can affect this Warriors roster, we're, we'll, we'll talk about that, right? Because it's not somebody who I see as a potential needle mover here. But let's look at the numbers for Troy Brown Jr. Why don't we, right? Because over the past couple of seasons, you see it on your screen, man. He has not been incredibly productive. But on that, just two seasons ago, with Los Angeles there, he did have decent numbers. He played a, the most minutes uh, of his career with L.A. Like I said, started 45 games, and he put up decent numbers, right? 38% from three. is a good 3 and D guy here who's going to give you a ton of effort. I, I don't mind Troy Brown Jr., but like I said, not going to be a crazy X factor. So what does Troy Brown Jr. bring, right? Because he's one of those guys where I was looking around the Internet last night because Let's be honest. I haven't watched the most Troy Brown Jr. film in the world. Let's, I don't think you have either. So I was trying to figure out what kind of player Troy Brown Jr. was and what his impact was throughout his couple seasons in the NBA so far. And from what I've gained is I don't know what he does well entirely because if you look, if you remember the numbers back there, he didn't shoot incredibly well from three-point range consistently over the past couple of seasons. He didn't score at a high volume. He didn't rebound at an incredibly high volume. But I will say one thing about Troy Brown Jr. is he gives you effort. One, one game that he had back with the Lakers in 22-23, he had 17 rebounds. So I guess for a 6'6 player, he does overperform as far as gla his glass cleaning abilities go. He gives you a ton of effort. He had 17 rebounds in that game. Seven of them were offensive rebounds. So I'm not going to be somebody who says, oh, yeah, I'm not going to give Troy Brown Jr. a chance because what he does is he gives you top-notch effort. Now, does it always translate into high-end production on the basketball court? Probably not, but... At the end of the day, you have to give a guy like this an opportunity. If he's going to give you those 
crazy type of effort performances. If he's going to show a guy like Jonathan Kaminga that, hey, even at 6'6", I can go up there and hustle for rebounds. I'm a big fan of Trey Brown Jr. in that regard. But as far as what he could really bring for this Golden State Warriors roster, let's be honest here, man. He, he's, he's not going to bring you anything that is going to move any needles. I, I don't even think if he would make an active roster for Golden State that he would see significant rotation minutes or even be in any rotation for that matter. So with that being said, I'm not going to say that they should sign Troy Brown Jr. or they shouldn't sign Troy Brown Jr. If he performs well, if he gives a ton of effort in these workouts, go ahead and do it. But for me, it, it, it's you know either one or the other. Uh, you, you sign Caboclo, you sign Davis Bertans, you sign Troy Brown Jr. Neither of those guys are probably going to make your roster regardless. So why even bother? Uh, as long as, unless you have major injuries there in the front court or on the wing, I, I don't really see a reason that uh, Troy Brown Jr. has any spot on this Warriors roster. Or, I mean, maybe. It, it's, 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 up to, it's up to you guys right now. Let me know what you guys think. Should the Warriors sign Troy Brown Jr.? Let me know down in the comments section. Type S for sign, type P for pass. I'm trying to hear from Dub Nation on what they think about Troy Brown Jr. Maybe you know something I don't. Enlighten me. Let me know down in the comments section. Next, is Jonathan Kaminga going to be an all-star this season? Bleacher Report, they said that they think he can. So let's we're going to dive into why I think Jonathan Kaminga could be taking the big leap, not only in the statistical production, but in some accolade production as well. I think Jonathan Kaminga has a chance to be a Western Conference all-star this season. So bef before we get into all that, I got to get you guys hooked up with the best daily fantasy sports app in the game, and that is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you guys got to do is pick a two to six player lineup and just pick more or less on each player's stats projections and watch the winnings roll in. This football season, it's here. And each week in September, Caleb Williams, if he gets one passing yard, that gets you one win on Prize Picks every week of the month. That's right, only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free dubs. Don't miss this deal on Prize Picks because it's gone when September ends. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize Picks is the re only real money daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks still has your entry live. They put their numbers first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. Prize Picks invented the flex play as well, which means you can still cash out the lineup if it isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one pick doesn't hit. And I got my picks right here for football week one. I'm, I'm taking full advantage of that Caleb Williams deal, more than half a passing yard. And I got your San Francisco 49ers in the mix as well. The Bay Area Warriors down there. Brandon Ayuk just signed a big-time deal. I'm looking for a big-time uptick in production. Give me more than 54-and-a-half receiving yards for him. Jake Moody, I think it's going to be a grit-and-grind game against those defensively staunch New York Jets. So give me more than one-and-a-half field goals made for Jake Moody. You can ride my picks. You can fade my picks. If you put those picks down, you can win up to five times your money. Just go do it at Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play just $5. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Is Jonathan Kaminga going to be an all star? Is this the year that we see Jonathan Kaminga become a mainstream star among the NBA? Bleacher Report thinks so. They put together a list of 10 players who can make their first all star list this season, and they rounded things out with Jonathan Kaminga. Now, why do I bring this up today? Why do I say that Jonathan Kaminga could be an all-star just out of the blue on some random day in September? Well, he's made a pretty big change to his physical appearance that past trends say is pretty effective in making him have an uptick in production. Look at the man. Notice anything different? No, that's not Frank Ocean. That's Jonathan Kaminga rocking the blonde hair, blonde goatee, switching things up for the 2024-25 season. Now, it is yet to be seen whether or not he'll keep this for this upcoming season when, when it rolls around in about a month and a half. But Jonathan Kaminga is switching up the look. Now, this is significant for one major reason. Remember last year, right? Jonathan Kaminga came into the year rocking the dreads, which he'd always rocked for the start of his NBA career, uh, heading into year four now. And Jonathan Kaminga, we all know, made a pretty big change with his hair last year. Went with the buzz, 
and with the buzz and the production increase that happened after that haircut came, pretty apparent. Now, uh, to be fair, I believe that the Steve Kerr meeting about his playing time came somewhere around this range. So maybe that was a, a bigger reason for the uptick in production. But these numbers cannot be denied. Shout out overtime for the numbers here. Back in February, they said Kaminga, before the haircut, was only averaging about 13 points a game on terrible three-point shooting and bad rebounding as well. Kaminga, after the haircut, uh, after the haircut, he was more hungry to crash the glass. Look at that six, six boards a game. 21 points a night on 45% from three-point. Listen, the sample size isn't massive, but... John Kaminga shooting any sample size of 45% from three is absolutely dynamite. And that's something I'm looking for him to improve. We're going to talk about what John Kaminga can improve upon later on in the show. But I'm thinking, in all seriousness, haircut nonsense, haircut juju aside, I think John Kaminga is taking the leap this season. Now, there are things he needs to improve upon, but I think John Kaminga is due for a massive, massive fourth season in the NBA. And he's going to need to have one, right? Because this is his contract year for John Kaminga. He's looking to make upwards of $200 million on his next deal. And it looks like he's going to be betting on himself heading into restricted free agency next summer. And he should, right? Look at the numbers that Jonathan Kaminga put up last season per 36. These look like the numbers that he put up after he got the haircut, funny enough. And, you know, after the haircut, he did get a minutes jump as well. But, I mean, 22 a night, six and a half rebounds, three assists. If we can get these numbers from Jonathan Kaminga this year... I am thrilled, thrilled. That's a huge uptick in production, and it is something that you're, you're looking to see from a guy who you took seventh overall just a couple of seasons ago. And funny thing about those numbers, Jonathan Kaminga is the only 21-year-old in NBA history to ever reach those marks per 36 over a 74-game sample size, the amount of games that Jonathan Kaminga played last season. That's unbelievable, man. I mean, honestly, I found it a little bit hard to believe. Now, I couldn't verify this is a basketball reference, um, stat note here, but I, I, I find it very hard to believe that no 21-year-olds ever put up those stats. I guess it's true because Jonathan Kaminga is just a trailblazer when it comes to young talent ascending in the NBA. And if we look at a little bit of a comparison uh, for Jonathan Kaminga here, look at year three between himself and Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, to be fair, was getting bogged down by a Kyrie Irving, by a Gordon Hayward return early on in his career in Boston, but the production from these two guys is eerily similar. I mean, Jalen Brown wasn't looked at as an elite rebounder back then. Look at him now. Jonathan Kaminga already had him in the scoring department. Both of these players struggled very early on in their career from three-point range. If Jonathan Kaminga becomes Jalen Brown, you're about to get him at a massive discount this season because he hasn't shown that he could be Jalen Brown just yet. He still has things that he needs to improve upon like Jalen Brown did at that stage in his career. So I have four things that I need Jonathan Kaminga to develop this season in order for him to be an all-star, to earn himself a massive contract next offseason. The first one, that outside jump shot. Listen, after you got the haircut, putting up that 45% uh, percent from three-point over a small-ish sample size, I'm taking that. But it goes beyond that. I'll take even 36%, 37%, 38% would be phenomenal out of Jonathan Kaminga off the catch, but... Also off the bounce as well. I need to see more from Jonathan Kaminga in the shot creation department. I need to see more of a bag from Jonathan Kaminga out there facing up on a defender. Not just a, you know, a rip through move and, and putting your shoulder into somebody. I need to see a little bit of separation ability from Jonathan Kaminga. I need him to be able to hit a step back three at a, you know, 33 to 35% clip. I need that out of him because you know what? The Warriors roster right now does not have a co confident, solidified number two scoring option next to Steph Curry. Jonathan Kaminga has the opportunity to become that this season if he can develop in these regards on the offensive end. Also, though, the defense needs to improve. Jonathan Kaminga is not gifted in the sense of his physical frame, right? He's not the longest guy out there. He's big. He's, he's got a big body for a 6'7 wing, but the wingspan doesn't really allow him to be able to now, not only defend guards on the perimeter, but also defend bigs and, and be able to sky up there and, and, and contest shots uh, for players that are maybe a little bit taller than him. So as far as what Jonathan Kaminga is you know, going to be this season, he's going to be a 3-4 hybrid. But I need to see better defense if he's going to be guarding some of these elite fours in the league who could put the ball on the deck as well. And like I said before, Jonathan Kaminga has never been the best rebounder. He's never had the... Biggest drive to go out there and crash the glass. And the Warriors have been trying to get him for years to be a glass cleaner, to attack the rim because he's so athletically gifted. He can jump out of the gym. Nobody needs to say that about Jonathan Kaminga. We know he's a human highlight reel. So why not go and sky up for more rebounds? 
I'm I'm all in on Jonathan Kaminga being this team's second, third leading rebounder this season. I just got to see the effort. I got to see the effort out of Jonathan Kaminga this year on the, uh, on the defensive end and on the glass as well. But as far as what I think he's going to do this season, numbers eerily similar to uh, his per 36. Not bad at a big Smith right here. 21.3 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 52% from the field. And I'm betting that he gets to 37.2% from three. That is my prediction for Jonathan Kaminga. I hope he exceeds my expectations. But I think that that was a pretty honest and pretty fair assessment of where I think his game is going to be this season. So before we go today, what do you guys think? Are you guys with me? Do you guys think Jonathan Kaminga could be an all-star this season? Let me, down, down, let me know down in the comments by typing Y for yes or typing N for no. I want to hear from Dub Nation. Are you guys this high on Jonathan Kaminga? Or do you think that maybe we should have traded him to get a big fish next to Steph Curry that's already established? Are you able to wait? Do you think he's going to be an all-star? Let me know. Y for yes and for no. And that'll do it for today's edition of Warriors Today by Chat Sports. Like I said, make sure you are subscribed. We're talking about everything when it comes to your Golden State Warriors. Workouts, signings, trades, contracts, does not matter. If there's a piece of Warriors news, we're bringing it to you right here on the channel. So hit that sub button. We'll see you in the next one. Let's go Dubs.